Hi everyone, I'm Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Marcus Bagwell. This digital weather extra for you. We've been watching the trends here in regards to the spring outlook. And on Wednesday, March the 18th, NOAA put out their official spring outlook forecast. So we are getting right on into spring. As a matter of fact, spring officially begins on Saturday, March the 20th. And thankfully, we have some really nice weather up ahead for the weekend. But a lot of the factors contributing to the the spring outlook are all driven by a couple of main characteristics. Either it's El Nino or La Nina. El Nino for us usually represents wetter than normal precipitation and also sometimes cooler than drier precipitation. But in a La Nina situation, similar to what we had developed even last year in 2020, La Nina makes it hotter than normal, drier than normal, and even leads to a more active season for the Atlantic Basin in regards to hurricanes. So let's show you what a typical La Nina looks like. So temperatures near the equator, near the equatorial Pacific, okay, this is west of South America, are about a half a degree Celsius below average. You might say that's not much, and yeah, it's really not much, but you factor that in on how cold it can get over this region or how cooler than average, and it really creates a huge impact globally across the world. Look at this here, a blocking area of high pressure. This is a ridge of high pressure that we would typically see in our region. It's in the Pacific Northwest. That allows for the building of a ridge of high pressure even over the Deep South region. And it also allows for this uh, Pacific jet stream or the subtropical jet stream here in green to also be able to lift a little bit nor more northward. That allows for the polar jet stream, the one here in white, to dip down and only come as far south as maybe the central and maybe the far northern southern plains. And that will keep us usually with warm and dry conditions because we don't have that tropical, subtropical jet, the one in green, moving into our area to actually help stimulate precipitation for us, widespread heavy rain and whatnot. So typically with the La Nina impact for us here at home, it's warm and dry conditions across the state of Texas. But you get back to the Pacific Northwest, well, that's where it's gonna be more wetter than normal. But then you're looking at colder than normal temperatures across portions of the Northern Plains and the Upper Rockies and all the way through the Deep South region. You'll notice here warm and dry conditions are typically expected during this type of La Nina weather. Now let's look at the outlook from the Climate Prediction Center in regards to what is coming our way as we get toward April, May, and June. This is their current forecast or current temperature outlook we are easily looking at warmer than normal temperatures, no question about it. And not only that, this really does encompass a good portion of the United States. You can notice here that this warmer air really will take effect across many areas, the exception being in the Pacific Northwest, where they're going to be looking at perhaps some cooler than normal temperatures. And when we talk about cooler or warmer than normal, we are not necessarily talking about just a typical week. We take in the average of all of three of these months and you get a numerical value. And if those three months average warmer than what climatology represents, then that's where we get the warmer than normal temperature. So what this essentially means for us is that we're probably going to move into a very warm period and a very muggy period, if I could add, April, May, and June time uh, for us here across the state of Texas and especially for us here in East Texas as well. How does precipitation shape up? Well, if we're going to have warmer than normal temperatures, we're usually going to have below normal precipitation. Now, the greatest threat for below normal precipitation is across the Rocky Mountains, but we get our share here and a little bit more precipitation is expected across the northeast and into portions of the Ohio Valley. Areas that are not shaded, that means about a 50% chance that it could go either way, below normal or above, but the Climate Prediction Center is saying that we are going to most likely see below normal precipitation, and that tends to make sense for us. Until we get a significant rain event that will come in, maybe give us an inch or two inches of rain, we usually, in a La Nina event, just don't get a whole lot unless it's with the El Nino pattern, and that's when weather the, wetter than normal conditions are expected. And look at this, the drought monitor. This is the seasonal drought outlook for us as we go into uh, March 18th all the way through the end of June. 
and we already have drought conditions here in East Texas. I have that drought, latest drought image posted in this story. If you just go on down to the bottom of this page, you'll be able to see the latest drought conditions. But the drought conditions are expected to persist. That's what these areas of brown represent. Now, the areas of yellow are indicating where drought conditions and the development of the drought will be likely. And you notice how that encompasses a good portion of East Texas. We will most likely run into drought-like conditions, especially as we get over the summer. And that means the soil moisture gets dried out and that will allow easily for potential wildfires and burn bans to be added to the list. So that's something too that we have to keep an eye on. I want to leave you with this. I want to leave you with how the temperatures look to impact themselves as we get through the next several days. These are the monthly averages. So this is based off of climatology going back for the last 25 to 30 years. These are the numbers and I'm just going to use Tyler as an example because they're fairly uniform for even for the Longview and Lufkin area. The more Morning low temperature average is around 54 degrees, but in April, the afternoon high temperature average is around 75. Watch what happens as we get to May. The morning low average on in May jumps almost 10 degrees into the low 60s. The uh, temperature in the afternoon, the high temperature average is around 83. And then in June, it really jumps up even more to around 70 degrees for the morning low. And the afternoon temperatures really approach the upper 80s and come very close to 90 degrees. So while we're dealing with this springtime weather, we are definitely going to continue to see some very warm conditions continue to prevail for us. And that's why the Climate Prediction Center, along with NOAA, are indicating that we're in this La Nina pattern through at least through portions of the spring into the summer. And this is going to most likely lead to very warm conditions for us. And again, this does not mean that we won't have storms. We still expect to have a pretty busy, severe weather season with storms coming into the area. Uh, but just overall, in terms of how the next three months of precipitation line up with what it should be based off of climatology, it's most likely going to be well below normal and those temperatures easily above normal. So something we've got to keep an eye on. We got more information about this uh, spring outlook from NOAA. It's more here written in this article below. Thanks for taking time to join us. And we'll be watching to see how all of this plays out. Again, it's just a seasonal outlook. It's a forecast. It's a prediction. It's a very long range forecast. So it could definitely change. We'll see how all the numbers pan out as we get to the end of June. Hey, thanks for stopping by.